Greetings gentlemen and ladies, in today's video we are going to be taking this AI generated concept art character and we are going to be transforming it into this 3D AI generated model uh, that I have actually rigged up with a procedural walk and imported into Unreal Engine. This is live real time gameplay. Uh, I think that looks pretty darn good. Let's take a look at how this workflow is accomplished. So the first part of this pipeline is Leonardo AI for image generation. And the reason I like Leonardo AI is for their real time generation feature where you can type in a prompt such as for example robotic robotic dog and it'll generate up a robotic dog in a certain art style now you can adjust the sliders a little bit to kind of create a different sort of art style and then what you can do is you can kind of keep that same art style right if you want to do consistent characters throughout your project but you can modify the prompt a little bit so in this case uh, a robotic dog that's armored a robotic dog that's armored and blue or however the case may be. Uh, if you're doing this, you're going to want to keep track of your seed information too. Your seed information and your slider information so that you can come back and you can kind of find the character style that you're looking for. If you scroll down, of course, on the slider, it'll become more realistic. If you scroll up, it'll become more uh, kid-like and illustrated. You can adjust the tune, anime slider, and a bunch of different things until you find an art style that you like, and then you just modify that uh, character prompt a little bit to get different characters in the same art style that we're then going to use a different program to convert into a 3D model. So here's the source character from the thumbnail of this video, which I started out with, and we will do a different character for this video, but as you can see, I was able to generate very consistent art styles, but with different characters. There's some robots, and we got like this 3D cat, and a 3D leopard, and a 3D panther, and whatever the case may be. So some pretty cool and consistent looking characters. All right, the next program we're going to use, next website we're going to use is called Hyperhumans Rodin. Uh, and I will link all of these in the description of this video for those of you who want to try it out. This is one of a few different programs, websites that you can use to convert illustrations into 3D models. This is my current favorite because it seems to do quite a nice job with the uh, way that the model is created. So I'm going to grab a different character here because we've already seen the poopy in the intro of this video. So I'm going to grab this little kitty and I'm going to use this as our reference image. Now I'm kind of concerned about this one because it's weird, got some weird tails and some other stuff like that that I think might confuse Wrote in. So I'm going to grab this one with the consistent single uh, character, single tail, and uh, generate that up and see what we get. Okay, so this is what we've got as the preview. Now this is an ugly preview. This is going to get better when we actually confirm it. But basically it's checking with us on a few things. Uh, it's got two tails at the moment because I guess it can't really tell the dimension. But you know what? This is a Robo Kitty. Maybe it should have two tails. I'm actually going to be okay with that. Uh, there's a couple other things that it's asking about that you could correct. For example, I might say it has a single tail, right? I might say single tail and this uh, would allow me to redo this prompt and uh, maybe generate it with a single tail. So you can use the reference image plus the prompt and sort of help it along if you're getting results that you don't like. It will also automatically detect a few things such as smooth edges, simple geometry, sharp edges, and so forth. But if you disagree with any of its uh, auto-generated selections kind of based on what it sees in the model, you can tell it some other things. Like I might say this is a character. I'm not sure what that will do. I've still got two tails. Well, that's okay. With a single tail, maybe just try this. With a single tail. And we'll see if we can get a redo out of that with only one tail. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. I actually ended up changing the prompting a little bit with a single tail coming out from behind it. And sure enough, well, now we've only got our single tail from behind. It does seem to be a bit weirdly attached to the model, but you know what? That's probably going to improve itself once I do the final generation. I'm going to select the hyper option. I think that gives us more detail with 10,000 polygons. I think that's a decent amount of polygons for a character of this simplicity, and I'm going to go ahead and generate that. <clears throat> this little preview is not really um, popping up correctly, but uh, basically, yes, it is symmetrical is what you're going to answer. I think it is a beta version, so they've got a couple glitches here and there, I think, right at the moment. Okay, and there we actually have our higher resolution model. And as you can see, if we zoom into that ge ge geometry, the polygons look quite good to me. Like they're nicely uh, positioned, nicely put together. 
Uh, this is the problem that I've had with some other 3D model generators is the polygon output has looked super, super weird, but I feel like Hyperhuman does a pretty good job with the polygons. We do still have that issue with an attached tail behind. So if I were to actually do this for real, I would maybe even do a little bit of Photoshop and create a separation to distance that tail from the body so that it didn't didn't think it was actually supposed to be attached like that. I'm not going to worry about it for the sake of this tutorial, but uh, yeah, there's a ways to fix these little details, certainly. Now, the next thing we're going to do is generate the texture. Again, based on the image, uh, what we're going to do is crank up the reference strength so that it is most alike the image source, and we're going to click on generate, and now it's going to generate the 3D texture map for this model as well. Now each of these generations takes about 30 seconds. Just so you know, I'm going to pause the video, but just so you know, if in case you're curious how long it takes. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, that's looking pretty good. Uh, okay, so let's now take this model and import this into Unreal Engine. Uh, I'm going to need to first confirm that this texture is okay, that I'm happy with it, that I don't need to regenerate it. Uh, basically, the way that Hyperhuman works is that they charge you when you confirm and when you generate, but you can retry the generations on the preview model a, a number of times, 15 or 50 times uh, for free until you're happy or unhappy with the results and decide to uh, keep the model or not. Now, I have noticed a very big difference between the 1K and the 4K texture, so I'm going to download the 4K texture in FBX format, which is good for Unreal Engine. Go ahead and click on Download to that. Okay, back in Unreal Engine, I've got my FBX model and textures in this folder here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and call it Kitty in my Unreal Engine project. And then I'm going to drag the base FBX model over into Unreal Engine. I'm going to click on Import All. Now, previously this had been importing the textures, but it's not doing that today. So what we're going to do is quickly fix that up by creating a new material and I'm going to call this the kitty material and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the textures to this kitty material. Okay so let's grab those texture maps and put them also into our kitty folder like so and we've got our material open here. I'm going to grab the texture diffuse and I'm going to plug that into the base color. I'm going to grab the metallic and I'm going to plug that into the metallic. I'm going to grab the normal and I'm going to plug that into, yeah you guessed it, the normal. I'm going to grab the roughness and that goes into roughness. All right, click apply, click save, and now back into our kitty model. We'll open up our static mesh kitty model over here. And from our kitty model, we're going to assign our new kitty material. Ho oh, ho ho ho, and we have our kitty cat. Isn't that nice? That looks quite, quite good. Kind of metallic and metally. If I didn't want it to look as metallic and metally, I could easily disconnect that metal. But you know what? I think what I'm going to do is apply 75% of the metal onto our kitty. That way we're kind of closer to the source reference. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, let's take our kitty and put our kitty now into the game and we'll take a closer look at him with lighting and everything like that. All right, let's hop right in. There we go. Now we've got a puppy and a kitty. Isn't that nice? Hello, kitty. Don't you look good? I think you look pretty, pretty, pretty not too very bad. Let's see. Let's compare. So we've got our source kitty on the left here, and we've got our uh, 3D model kitty. I think he's pretty darn... I mean, this is AI generated in a few minutes. Like, that's cool for a certain style of game like with consistent characters for kind of a kind of a more cartoony style game i think that this 3d pipeline is really really cool obviously it's got some limitations still but it's going to be pretty amazing to see what happens with this over the next year here's a look at another one of the characters that i imported and rigged up again with some procedural walk by the way if you guys want to see how i did the procedural walk rigging and basically added a bone and skeletal structure to the otherwise static mesh character that was imported well, let me know here are some of the other characters that I've also imported as uh, 3D models from Leonardo AI to Hyperhuman and then into Unreal, <laughs> Unreal Engine. Uh, you might be wondering what that little ball is on top of this anti boy's head. Well, that's a laser beam ball. He shoots laser beam balls, obviously, like any good robotic ant should. 
And that's a bouncing ball of death. I don't know, I'm playing around with some fun physics stuff. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Links in description to all of these softwares and of course Patreon if you feel supportive. I'll see you in the next one. We're in this video, we learn how to create an AI model from an AI illustration. I'm sorry to everyone who studied to be an AI artist. Trust me, I feel your pain. The same thing is happening with music and lots of other things too. But hey, maybe it'll actually just help to unlock creativity by reducing the barrier to entry. Yeah, yeah, yeah.